Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night, everyone, whenever you watch this video. So we are from Group 6. Um, Ismail Barak. My name is Suwana Safi. My name is Taufik Enha. We are, we would like to discuss some questions here regarding psycholinguistic and language teaching. And also, uh, we will, we would like to talk about the contribution of the language teaching also. So, um, there will be about seven questions that we would like to discuss together here. Um, without any further ado, so let's get started. The first question, what do you know of pedagogy and language pedagogy? Explain your answer in detail. Um, for the first one is Safri. Uh, so the first, uh, I would like to give the concept of pedagogy based on the online dictionary and expert opinion. Uh, literally, there is a lot of definition from this concept. But the, at the moment, I just mentioned one of them. Uh, the first is, according to dictionary Cambridge ORD, pedagogy refers to the study of the methods and activities of teaching. And according to Murphy 2008, I said that pedagogy is about the interaction between teachers, students, and learning environment and learning tasks. Based on the definition present in the two perspectives, we can find the keyword to understand pe pedagogy, that is teaching method. Although uh, almost every definition explains the concept of pedagogy without using the same term teaching method directly, but using slightly different terms such as the, the way teachers deliver the content of the curriculum, the teacher's way to build the student's knowledge, interactive process between teachers and learners ways to build learning. Interaction between teachers and students a uh, systematic view of organi organizing education. But the meaning of these terms basically refers to the same keyword. So pedagogy in general can be defined as the study of different teaching methods used by teachers. Okay, next language pedagogy. We can look the concept of language pedagogy by online website then expert view. All right, according to study.com, language pedagogy is a rigorous field of study that thoroughly examines principle of practices of teaching a second language in which teachers focus on equipping learners to acquire proficiency in a new language. Uh, according to Krams, Levin, GS, and Pips, uh, as the language pedagogy refers to a complexity approach means viewing the entire system in which learners learn a new language. There are two keywords are found in the definition as the essence of concept of language pedagogy in this context, namely teaching practice and teaching principles. According to King Rudu, and Naimuli ST in 2009, teaching practice is an integral component that occurs in the interaction between teachers and students in the classroom where a teacher transfer knowledge to a group of students to provide knowledge, skills, and learning experience using uh, the necessary teaching and learning tools. Uh, according to Rappel, Assume that the principle of teaching refers to a fundamental rule or a belief used to, for organizing the interaction among teachers, uh, students, and learning contexts so that the effectiveness of teaching and learning process is guaranteed. So language pedagogy can be defined as the principle used by teachers to present effective language instruction to students. Okay, I think that's all for me. Okay. So, what about you, Talbot? My answer is, pedagogy is the study of teaching methods and strategies, while language pedagogy is specifically focused on teaching language skill 
such as reading, writing, speaking, and listening. In the language pedagogy, the airfare is approach and methods used to teach different languages to students depending on their age level of proficiency and learning style. For instance, some language teacher may ask a communicative approach where students engage in activities that simulate real life communication situation. That's all for me. Okay, um, so about my answer regarding the pedagogy and language pedagogy. For the pedagogy based on the Shah, Air, Kai, and Campus as 2021 think that the concept of pedagogy refers to a systematic view of organizing education. It discussed the issues of how to educate and what it means to be educated. From the explanation, from the definitions, um, I acknowledge that pedagogy refers to the teaching method that teachers use in teaching, simply the way the teachers teach in class and delivering material and also um, engaging the students to interact with them, which is the interaction between teachers and students, students and another students, as well as um, the implement the curriculum. The curriculum here is that the material that they use uh, in the language teaching, in the language learning and teaching. Um, and also I acknowledge that pedagogy aligns with experiential learning. Experiential learning is a constant constructivist learning theory, defined as a learning by doing, which is the learner is an active participant in the educational process and learning is achieved through a continuous cycle in inquiry, reflection, analysis, and synthesis. It based on the bar to 2005 and, and 2015, which um, in this case, pedagogy not only focuses on giving knowledge to the students, but also try to make them implementing what they have learned in class to their daily life. Simply just like to interact uh, in each other in their environment. It's about pedagogy. And talk about language pedagogy. Based on Jules GA 2019 believed that Language pedagogy refers to the specific theory and philosophy which guides and directs the instruction used in the teaching language. Um, from the definition, um, I acknowledge that language pedagogy refers to the teaching practice and teaching principle that involves several components in the process of teaching, as teachers, students, lesson, as well as environment. So. If we talk about language pedagogy, we talk about all those components. Thus, the teaching and learning of language would run effectively because of those uh, components before. And also, we appropriate approaches, method, and techniques in teaching language. So, this are, this are my answer. So, let's get started to the next question. Do you agree with saying that psycholinguistic is is an approach. How come? Explain your position with reason and evidence. Well, maybe we can start from the topic first. Yes, I agree with the statement that psycholinguistic is an approach. Psycholinguistic is concerned with understanding the mental process involved in language acquisition, processing, and production. It combines insight from linguistic, psychology, and cognitive science to provide a comprehensive framework from student language. That's all for me. Okay, now um, how about yourself? Okay, from the statement side, is the psycholinguistic as an approach? Uh, I agree about that because in the article, the reason um, in 2004 argues that, argue that Psycholinguistic is basically an approach that is often overlooked in the field of foreign language teaching and learning. One of the reasons the reason and classify this study as an approach because psycholinguistic is an approach since it is it is basically a study which which is developed by integrating the two fields of study, namely psychology and linguistics. Uh, the next is the evidence 
It is obvious that psycholinguistics has provided various theories about language, especially those that explain how a language is acquired, perceived, and produced by speakers of the language, both orally and in writing. Uh, in addition, these theories have been widely used in the field of language pedagogy. These language teaching methods are developed by applying theoretical principles in psycholinguistics, especially those related to the theory of language acquisition, comprehension, and production. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, thank you. So, regarding my answer for this question, um, some have suffered before about um, the definition, um, not the definition, but the concept for the reason which are just the psycholinguistic is an approach that is often overlooked in the field of foreign language teaching and learning. Therefore, um, in the form of psycholinguistic as an approach views language learning such a completely, completely cognitive process. So, in this case, I agree with saying that psycholinguistic is an approach because with the psycholinguistic, we can learn the language more it's more easily. Um, another thing is that about the evidence that psycholinguistic is an approach. In this case, um, in the psycholinguistic, we learn about language acquisition, in which language acquisition studies about how to acquire language that contribute to the psycholinguistic in understanding how linguistic knowledge develop in human mind. So. Um, if we're talking about, is there any, um, is it an approach or not? I do agree with that it is an approach because in the language acquisition process, we learn about how the human mind work and produce, perceive, or even acquire the language. Well, maybe that's all my answer. So let's just move to the third question. Do you agree with saying that? psycholinguistic has contributions to language pedagogy. Why? What do you know of contribution? Um, maybe the first one is to suffer it. All right. Yes, psycholinguistic has significant contribution to language pedagogy. The study of psycholinguistic provides valuable insight into the cognitive process involved in language learning, comprehension, and production which can inform and enhance language pedagogy. Two types of contribution can be identified, namely theoretical contribution and practical contribution. Okay, the first is theoretical contribution. Uh, the theoretical contribution means that psycholinguistics has provided a series of concepts or postulates not only about the phenomenon of the relationship between language and mind, but also about how the mind influences the use and the acquisition of language, where these concepts have a positive influence in shaping and understanding of language, especially on those involved in the process of language teaching and learning, such, a, such as teachers and learners. Okay, next, practical contribution. The practical contribution refers to how the understanding gained from the theoretical contribution not only affect the way or action of teachers in teaching language, but also affect the way or strategy of students in learning language. Practical contribution can be seen in the innovation and the use of parity of language teaching methods and techniques developed from a theoretical understanding of psycholinguistics. Okay, I think that's all for me. Okay, thank you. Um, maybe we would like to hear from Topic. Yes, I agree because psycholinguistic has provided and has been the cause of improvement or progress in the area of language pedagogy, learning and teaching. Two type of contribution two types of contribution, namely theoretical contribution and practical contribution. The theoretical contribution means that psycholinguistic has provided a series of concepts or postulates not only about the phenomenon of the relationship between language and mind, 
but also about how the man influenced the us and the acquisition of language, where this concept have a positive influence in shaping the understanding of language, especially on this involved in the process of language teaching and learning, such as teacher and learners. The practical contribution refers to the how the understanding gained from the theoretical contribution not only affect the way or action of teacher in teaching language, but also affect the way or strategy of the students in learning language. That's my answer. Okay, thank you. So, um, regarding my answer for this question, um, I do agree with saying that psycholinguistics has contribution to language pedagogy. Um, the reason is that psycholinguistics provides knowledge related to how language is acquired, produced, and perceived in human mind, or simply we learned we study about the force that occurs in human mind and it acknowledge what problems in the human mind will persist in language. So in the psycholinguistic, we can find um, some of the challenging and also some of the obstacles that human human face in producing, perceive or even acquire a language. And also if we connect it to the language pedagogy, it will contribute to the designing appropriate material to solve those problems that human face in acquiring, producing, or even perceiving language. Um, for example, in the in the situation of in the situation of the of language learning and teaching, um, if we connect to the psycholinguistic, uh, specifically in the language pedagogy. Um, when the students have a problem of facing certain challenges in learning about language, the teacher should understand what um, what the student's problem or the student's challenge and also find um, the best solution and also or even designing um, any appropriate material to make them more easier to learn about the language in which, in this case, to make the teachers more easier to understand about the problem and find the solution is the bio-psycholinguistic. And I'm talking about the contribution. And in this case, there are two contributions. The first one is theoretical and practic theoretical contribution. The second one is practical contribution. But I would like to talk about it more um, in the next question. So yeah, maybe that's my answer. Um, let's move to the next questions. To the best of your knowledge, what are the difference between theoretical and practical contributions of psycholinguistic to language pedagogy? Well, maybe I would like to answer first here. Um, we talk about theoretical and um, practical contribution. It's both of things that different, but they have uh, related each other, which is we will be um, discuss in the next question. But in this case, um, as I acknowledge that theoretical contribution refer to the concept such as relation between language in their mind, language in the mind, in their phenomena, how, um, how the mind acquire, produce, or even perceive a language that can shape the understanding of language. So it refers to the theoretical contribution because there's a concept that we uh, that we learn about. Um, particularly in this case, um, in language teaching and learning process, because we need the concept to make a more understand about the language. Besides um, practical contribution, this kind of contribution refer to the action of the teacher in teaching English right, as the language teaching method and techniques as well as the way the students in learning language. And this kind of practical contribution is that after uh, acquire some knowledge from the theoretical contribution, uh, we need action here, which is um, by practical contribution, they act to uh, implement what they have learned in the theoretical contribution, which is the teacher tried to find the best approach, uh, method, and also techniques in teaching language, and also 
for the students try to find the more easier strategies or even uh, the learning way that make them more fun in learning language. So yeah, I'm with some answer. Um, how about you, Safri? Okay. So we talk about the theoretical contribution and practical contribution again. So theoretical contribution of psycholinguistic involves the development of over operating frameworks and model while a uh, practical contribution focuses on applying these theories to improve teaching methods, create interventions, and enhance the overall language learning experience for students. So, both aspects are crucial for the effective integration of psycholinguistic into language pedagogy. I think that's all for me. Okay, now on to topic. What about you? My answer, theoretical contribution of psycholinguistic to language pedagogy include insight into the mental process involved in language acquisition, such as the role of working memory and long-term memory in language learning, and practical contribution of psycholinguistic to language pedagogy involved applying the insight gained from the theoretical research to develop teaching methods and strategies that take into account the unique characteristic or characteristic of different languages and learning. That's my answer. Okay, thank you. So, um, we would like to move to the next question. The next question is number five. Um, does psycholinguistic have contribution to the? No, to the. Um, okay. Does psycholinguistic have contribution to teaching productive skills? Explain your answer in detail. Um, maybe the first one I would like to give to Taufik. Yes, psycholinguistic has made significant contribution to the teaching of productive skills, such as speaking and writing. The field of psycholinguistics has provided insight into the mental process involved in language production such as the role of automated and controlled process in speech production. This knowledge can inform teaching practice by helping teachers understand the difficulties that learners may encounter when producing language and providing strategies to support language production. That's my answer. Okay, um, next to Safri. Part. My answer is yes, psycholinguistic has significant contribution to teaching productive skills, which involve language outputs such as speaking and writing. Uh, the understanding of cognitive processes related to language production, comprehension, and acquisition provided by psycholinguistic can inform effective instructional strategies for developing and attaching productive language skills. Uh, there are three stages explain the contribution. At the first is the conceptualization stage. Uh, the mind needs semantic knowledge. This means that to be able to speak, students need to needs knowledge of what to talk about. This is commonly referred to as the abstract idea. In teaching, what to talk about is also called the topic. Thus, when teaching speaking skills, the first knowledge that must be taught to students is the knowledge of the topic. Okay, next, the second stage is the formalization stage. To carry out this stage, the main is syntactical knowledge. Syntactical knowledge is divided into two, namely lexical knowledge and grammatical knowledge. This illustrates to us that after teaching topic knowledge, teachers also need to teach syntactical knowledge in the form of lexical items needed to represent the topic. In this context, lexical items consist of lemma, lexeme, words, and vocabulary. And the third stage is articulation stage. To carry out this stage, the mind needs phonological knowledge that is ability to construct sentences and pronounce this sentence with correct pronunciation. Alright, I think that's all for me. 
Okay, um, regarding my answer for this question, um, I can say that, yes, it does. There's a contribution, which is where um, productive skills refer to the speaking and writing skill. Particularly in speaking, as priority in this context, um, let's talk about it much. Here, there are two important things that focus on a speaking skill as the output of the language production, and um, a speaking skill impaired due to mental factor. Um, talking about um, language production, as you have explained before, there are some stages which is conceptualization and etc. And um, if we talk about um, speaking skill impaired due to mental factor, is that some of the obstacles that people face, um, or even the students face when speaking, such as scare of missing something and um, some error that they face in speaking. Both of these influence the learning language approaches, approaches, methods, and techniques that teachers should use in language teaching. Why? Because um, in the process of learning speaking is such a complex thing also, because some students don't um, do not feel comfortable to speak in front of the people. So in this case, um, the teacher should find the best solution to face it. And um, yeah, that's how the contribution in psycholinguistic uh, which is in the pedag uh, teaching pedag language pedagogy. And um, another thing is that the information from those both things can guide teacher to determine the appropriate knowledge based on the challenges of the student face in speaking a language, as I have explained before, that speaking being focused because in acquiring productive skills, the first skill to develop in in this case is that speaking skill. And then um, we move to the writing skills. So it can be concluded that the psycholinguistic has contribution to teaching productive skill and there is so much contributions here. Well, now we move to the next questions. Um, does psycholinguistic have contribution to teaching receptive skill. Explain your answer in detail. So before we talk about the predictive skills, now we talk about receptive skills. Um, I think I would like to answer first. Um, yes, it does. It also have a contribution. Contribution. Because um, receptive skills refers to listening and reading skill. Um, before we talk about predictive skill that focus on speaking and writing, and then both of this thing is um, referred to the important skills in language that we need to build together in learning language. And um, in this case, um, we focus on listening as priority. The skills refers to the language perception. So if in the productive skill we focus on language production, but in our receptive skills, we focus on language perception, in which the perception process we need a knowledge that enable us to perceive and understand uh, the language well. If, if it's related to the psycholinguistic, um, after I observe it, um, in this case, passive linguistic knowledge used to refer the language products such as listening skills. So, um, if we connect it between psycholinguistic and teacher receptive skills, both um, have a significant contribution because in the listening skills, we need linguistic knowledge. We need passive linguistic knowledge. And um, yeah, it can be concluded that psycholinguistic has contribution to teaching productive skills. Maybe that's all for me. Um, what about you, Taufik? Yes, psycholinguistic has made significant contribution to the teaching of receptive skill, such as listening and reading. Receptive skill in psycholinguistic fall into the category of language perception. Language perception is the effort of human mind to understand the meaning or the interpretation of messages expressed in word, in word, press, close, sentence, or even discourse in communication. That's my answer. Okay, what about you, Salford? All right. Uh, my answer is psych 
Yes, psycholinguistics have significant contribution to teaching receptive skills, which involve language comprehension, such as reading and listening. So, understanding the cognitive processes related to language perception, interpretation, and comprehension provided by psycholinguistics can inform effective instructional strategy for developing and enhancing receptive language skills. I'll think it all. Okay, thank you so much for the answer. And next, we would like to move to the last question. To the best of your knowledge, are the theoretical and practical contribution of psycholinguistics connected each other? Explain your position with reason and also evidence. Maybe we would like to hear first from Saf from Taufik, then Safri, and then the last one is me. Yes, I believe that the theoretical and practical contribution of psycholinguistic are closely connected. Theoretical contribution provide a framework for understanding the mental process involved in language acquisition and processing, while practical contribution involve applying this insight to develop teaching method and strategic strategies that support language learning. Example of one. One example of this connection is the input hypothesis developed by Crescent, which is based on theoretical insight into the role of conferenceable input the language acquisition. That's my answer. All right, I will continue the question. So my answer from the question is, yeah, of course, because the theoretical and practical contribution of psycholinguistic are connected to each other. The theoretical contribution provide concepts, postulates, and theories that explain the relationship, relationship between language and the mind, as well as how the mind influences language use and acquisition. This theoretical understanding then inform and shape the practical contribution in the field of language teaching and learning. The practical contribution, on the other hand, involves the application of the theoretical knowledge in the development of teaching techniques, strategy, and methods. The understanding gained from the theoretical contribution influences the action and approaches of teachers in teaching language, as well as the strategies and approach of students in learning, in learning language. Therefore, the theoretical and practical contribution of psycholinguistics are interconnected and mutually inform each other. Okay, thank you. Um, now about my answer regarding this question. As I have mentioned before in previous question that we would like to talk about the relationship between theoretical and practical contributions. So in this case, um, in my own opinion, both of theoretical and practical contribution connected each other. Because um, in the theoretical contribution, it refer, it refers to the kinds of language knowledge that are really helpful to the teacher and students in dealing with challenges in language learning and teaching. And also, it drives them to the practical contribution. Um, based, on the, based on the language knowledge from the theoretical contribution. So, um, after they earn the knowledge about uh, language from the theoretical contribution, they they then um, implement the concept to their daily activity in the way they learn English, the way they the way their students teach in, the way the teachers teach English, the way the students learn English. So it can be um, it can be part of the practical contribution. So here, a teacher implemented the appropriate approaches, method, and techniques and teaching language, as well as the students in find the strategies and learning language. So um, both of these things as related, connected to each other, and in my mind, it cannot be separated because um, we don't just need theoretical, but we also we need practical in our uh, learning process, specifically in learning language. So yeah, maybe that's all my answer. From overall the discussion before, is there any questions or suggestions? 
okay, no, so, because there is no Christian servant um, response. Maybe that's all from us regarding the seven questions of second linguistic and language teaching and also the contribution to the language teaching. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.